I've been using Xcode to look at serial queues and run loops this evening, and I want to share something I found out. It may be common knowledge, but it was news to me. So I'm going to go here. I'm, I'm going to pick a black pen. And as usual, we're going to draw our main queue over here, which has its own NS run loop and main thread. And we're going to call this run loop run loop A tonight. And we're going to actually give it a color. I'm going to call this run loop. I'm going to put it inside here just because I need some place to put it. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. So we'll get that blue pen again. Give it to me, good, that'll do. So this is run loop A. Okay. Then, let's see here, there's an easy way to pick black, so I'm just gonna do that. Um, we're going to, as usual, do some instructions, fire off a create dispatch queue. We're going to use to create a serial queue here. And it has its own NS run loop and its own, we'll call it, um, I'm not going to call it worker thread because that's what the other threads are. We're going to call it the uh, running or the uh, Control control thread. That will do nicely. We're going to call this B, and we're going to go pick the color red. Hmm. Seems to give me an issue there now. All of a sudden, and this is going to be B, and then. Uh, here, we'll get back to this in a minute. But over here at some point, we're gonna call dispatch queue again. I'm just gonna write DQ and it will create another serial queue that I can do some work on. And over here, we're going to have our GCD thread pool. We're going to have thread threads here I can pull out and use from the pool. And I'm going to have a run loop on this queue. So you have to pick from inside, and I'm going to call it C. I'll just go up here and note it has its own NS run loop, C, and its own controller thread. And again, the role of the controller thread is to go start things and pull threads from the GCD. Okay. So, now, let's go back to the main thread. As yesterday, execute some instructions. We're going to have some work here in a closure called C1. And it's just going to do a print. Hi. A really short hello. So we have a C1 here. And we have C2 down here. And it will do kind of the same thing.
print world. How's that? Hi world, very informal. So now we have two closures we can play with. Okay. Now we're going to go fire off. So we've created a queue here. Call it Q1. Now we're going to go say uh, Q1. Can I get it there? Whoops. I can't get it there. That's what happened. Async. So we're going to place C1 over here, and we're going to run it async. So now what's going to happen here is that's going to go pull a thread. Let me change the color here. It's going to go pull a thread over here, and I'm going to pick red specifically so that we know what run loop it's running on. And it's going to be running C1 on this thread on the worker pool. Okay. Now from C1, we're actually going to be creating the dispatch queue here. Right, so that's where it's created from inside C1. And going to go create Q2 and we're going to fire a sync q2.sync and we're going to just make it closure C2 it's going to go over here and run over here sync okay control thread is going to go pull over and I'm going to do it and here's the thing this is going to surprise you I'm going to do it in red again you can say, really? But we're running on a different queue. Well, here's what I found out. Oops, let me back that up. I found out C2 and C1 are running on the same run loop. Okay? So in other words, I have run loop A here, I have run loop B here. When I fire async, it goes and uses this second run loop to run a new closure on Q1 here. When I fire a sync, remember it blocks here, right? So it's blocking on this thread and executing instructions on this thread until it returns back here. Clear that out again. Right? Now here's the so here's the interesting thing. If I go back and I've executed this on C2 and it's returned, and I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go fire Q2 async. Black again. I'm gonna fire Q2 async. Okay, and again, this time I'm going to go with green. Okay. It's going to pull. I should have pulled from a different thread there, but oh well. I'm going to go create thread here. It's going to run C2. This time it's going to run it asynchronously. Right? And this will actually run it on this thread. Okay, which is on this run loop, which has a different ID, a different object reference. I'm going to show that to you in code in just a moment. So let's think about what happened here. So we have uh, a run loop on the main thread, A. We go and create a dispatch queue. We then run C1 asynchronously on this serial queue. Um, and it gets its own run loop with ID B. 
We then, from within that closure, running asynchronously, we then run sync on this queue, but it's running on this run loop right here. You should probably paint that in red, right? To stay consistent with what I'm trying to do here. So let me go do that. There you go. So it's running on this run loop. C1 and C2 are both running on this run loop, which is not what I would have expected. Okay. Once that finishes up, the control returns to this thread. Then I go and submit another. I submit C2. This time I submit it asynchronously to Q2. And it runs on this thread, this run loop, rather. Right? Let's look at some code. This is not what I would have expected. I would have expected uh, one of two things, either that when I submitted this C2 synchronously to this queue that it would have gotten this run loop here, or I might have expected that it got a completely different assignation. I, the last thing in the world I expected was that it would get, get exactly the same run loop from this queue. And next we will look at some code. So I've created a third button here, look at an automatic worker threads run loop. When I went back to the 2012 uh, uh, Daniel Stefan talks, this is how he refers to the threads that are pulled off the GCD thread pool and used by the queue to run closures submitted from uh, other queues, okay, from other threads. Um, so let's go here, let's look at the, quickly at the code I wrote. Look at thread run loop. So very simply, I create a queue from the main thread and then I look at the serial number of the main threads run loop, there are the ID number, the object reference number, then going into this first async of um, what I call C1 in the drawing, I'm just printing out the current loop on the serial thread. Right? Then as I fire this thread synchronously from this async, from this closure submitted async to a, to a second queue, I'm going to go look at its current thread. And finally, I'm going to fire. So once it returns, because I'm blocking here, right? I'm going to fire it async, and I'm going to then look at its current thread. And I'm going to show you the results that I got. So here's what happened. Let's go all the way to the bottom. First of all, well, first of all, we can see the main thread. It's 1603C0. So that's the only time we'll see that number. That's the CF run loop on the main thread. And if we go down here, we see on the first serial thread, 16165B80. And just to remind you, that's the closure submitted synchronously or submitted asynchronously from the main thread. So that's the first C1 submission running in red, right? Now, if we go down, we're going to see the sync. I should say, right, I should say after async, yes, but this is the sync. So this is the sync method of C2 submitted to the second queue. And you'll notice 165B80. It has precisely the same run loop, right? And if you think about it, it's kind of clear what's happening. It's just keeping events, you know, it's saying you're running it synchronously. Well, that means essentially you're, con you're continuing a thread of execution. So it's not bothering to switch run loops because why would it? Right? And finally, on C2 submitted the third time, this time asynchronously, asynchronously it's now 162.940, which means it's a third run loop. So we're dealing with three run loops. The main, run, the main loop, the second loop, which runs 
uh, through C1 asynchronously and then synchronously C2. And then the third run loop, which runs C2 asynchronously.